Another horrid side of bad success borders on slave trade. Many years ago, slavery was common throughout the world. It was born out of devilish inclinations. A slave is anyone in captivity or an oppressive state that has been stripped of all fundamental human rights. Every slave belongs to a slave master. During the slave trade era, human beings were sold like commodities in open markets. Slavery was widespread in Africa. Slaves were abused, brutalized, and sometimes used as human sacrifices to local deities. It is estimated that over 75 million Africans died while being shipped to various slave trade markets in the Americas, in Europe, and other destinations due to horrible conditions they underwent in transport vessels. During the arduous voyages by sea, they were usually packed like sardines in the most unsanitary conditions. Slaves were often in chains. Some even had their lips padlocked, while others were blindfolded for many days, weeks, or months. The transatlantic slave trade flourished for about four centuries. African leaders were also guilty of human trade atrocities. They sold their fellow Africans as slaves for a pittance to Europeans who invaded African cities, exchanging human lives for Western artifacts, guns, and other commodities. Coastal communities in African nations bore the brunt of those despicable activities. African leaders audaciously traded their sons and daughters for insignificant cutleries, alcohol, and worthless trinkets. In many developed countries of the world, slavery was practiced extensively. Children were sold as slaves by parents who used them for collateral to secure loans, which they often failed to repay. Female slaves were used for sex, and when they contacted sexually transmitted diseases, they were discarded like garbage and left to die. Slavery is generally a crippling and dehumanizing act that brings about a sense of inferiority, fear, depression, misery, sorrow, and pain to its victims. It causes premature death. It is evil, an aberration, and a calamity to humanity. Some historians believe that the total number of Africans killed or abducted as slaves were over a hundred million. Presently, slavery has formally been outlawed worldwide by the United Nations Convention because it is criminal and evil. How be it? Surprisingly, some nations still surreptitiously engage in slave trade activities. Slavery includes sexual exploitation, forced prostitution, torture, such as the castration of men and terrible weeping. It is amazing that slavery still exists in this day and time in so many countries of the world, including some African countries. Human trafficking is reported to thrive in countries like Afghanistan, Eritrea, Yemen, Libya, South Sudan, United Arab Emirates, and several other countries. Child trafficking is reported to be highly predominant in the Philippines, Cambodia, Thailand, Vietnam, Equatorial Guinea, Iran, and several other countries. Presently, more than a hundred nations of the world have ratified the International Treaty on the Ban of Slavery. The abolition of slave trade was a sharp blow to many nations because the livelihood of people who benefited from the slave trade was suddenly cut off. Currently, there are still over 50 million slaves across the world. Most of them, women and children living as slaves world over. Child slavery has been on the rise in recent times. An international and non-government organization and advocacy group called Free the Slaves corroborates the assertion that there are over 50 million people living in slavery today. The transatlantic slave trade, which evolved into a multi-billion dollar industry, may have been outlawed in principle, but the reality is that slavery continues to thrive in many countries of the world like Libya, Yemen, South Sudan, Burundi, Syria, Turkey, Mexico, Serbia, Nigeria, Ghana, Brazil, Uganda, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Ivory Coast, Democratic Republic of Congo, and the list goes on. It is alarming that in this 21st century, after so much noise has been made about the abolition of slavery, human commerce continues to flourish in the form of child soldiers, slave laborers, and sex slaves. Modern day slavery generates over $150 billion in profits for traffickers annually, and most slave victims are toddlers, teenagers, and women. Many sex slave victims range from ages of 9 to 16. They are denied education and medical care. 
Not a few of these defenseless children are sexually, psychologically, and physically brutalized as they are subjected to inhumane treatment and painful servitude. In several African countries, majority of the elite are guilty of modern-day slavery. Many of them procure the services of teenagers from villages and treat them like subhumans or slaves. Some even designate storerooms that are earmarked for storage of foodstuffs and junks as living quarters for these domestic slaves, many of whom are subjected to inhumane slave labor. They oftentimes ignore such domestic slaves when they fall sick and allow them to eat only leftovers. Ironically, many of these oppressive slave masters are very religious. The United States of America is renowned for its policy on liberty and justice, but oddly, it has become infested with domestic and sex slaves. Most modern-day slaves are smuggled from African, Asian, and Latin American countries such as Nigeria, the Gambia, Thailand, and Mexico. Domestic servitude and sexual slavery are so predominant in the United States of America that one cannot help but wonder how such slave victims get successfully trafficked into such a great country. From Ohio to Michigan, New York to Texas, Washington to California, commercial sex dealers, pimps, strip club owners, karaoke nightclub proprietors, sex bars and brothels thrive. Italy is a notorious sanctum for sex traffickers. The Italian police are generally believed to turn a blind eye on sex trade recruiters and dealers. They purportedly protect sex traffickers from arrest because many of the police personnel are beneficiaries of sex commerce. But frankly, the real enemy is the demand for prostitutes and slaves because if there are no demands, there will be no sex or slave trafficking. Both leaders across the world must strive to promulgate and enforce stringent laws against the abuse of human beings. That is the sure way to go about strangulating sex trading and slavery, which is a global multi-billion dollar enterprise. The hammer really has to come down heavily on sex vultures because millions of women and children are being raped, brutalized and destroyed daily by sex traffickers and slaveholders. Can you imagine the pain of a mother whose nine-year-old daughter was abducted by sex traffickers who not only raped her repeatedly but also gave her a serious target of having sexual intercourse with at least 10 men on a daily basis? Such pain is worse than the grief of bereavement. How do we rescue defenseless victims trapped under the scourge and dungeon of slavery? Leaders across the free world must wake up to their responsibilities and restore the basic human rights of victims of slavery. Human trafficking is a moral tragedy, a cruel plague on humanity, a catastrophic and distasteful means to achieve financial success. Suffice it to asseverate the truism that on a daily basis, millions of victims of slavery are being bought and sold across international borders. Slavery is an attack against humanity and this menace must be fought like the war on terror. Slavery is nothing short of an act of terrorism. World leaders must wake up from their slumber and clamp down on slave trafficking. It is no longer news that slave labor camps exist in many countries world over. Defenseless people are tormented daily, exploited, brutalized and forced to labor under harsh conditions. The rice that you consume the sugar that you apply to your beverages and cereals or the rug in your home may have been produced by slave laborers. That is what we refer to as the blight of bad success. Edmund Bock was an Anglo-Irish statesman and philosopher who was born in 1729 and passed away in 1797. He spent most of his career in Great Britain and was well known as the philosophical founder of conservatism. It was he who made the very popular aphorism that states all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. End of quote. Indeed, if it were crude oil, gas, or precious stones like diamonds at stake, many countries of the world will be spoiling for outright war. But in the matters of human rights, slavery, and genocide, the resolve of the international community to confront these monsters is weak. We must all rise up to fight against the evil called modern day slavery. Incontrovertibly, all proceeds that accrue from slavery thereof is bad financial success which must be condemned in total. Racism is another blight of success by its perpetrators. 
it is a shameful and appalling ideological phenomenon that surprisingly still rears its ugly head in many parts of the world and in various strata of humanity. It is a stereotyped and prejudiced belief that some races are superior to others in terms of ideologies, resources, attitude, power, technological advancement and so on. One may begin to wonder what the correlation is between racism and bad success. That you will discover shortly. You see, racism is a primitive, crude, immoral, outrageous, unreasonable and unfathomable philosophy of people who inanely opt to dwell in darkness in the midst of light. It is senseless to believe that the color of a person's skin affects his or her intellect or potentials. There is no human being on earth that has a choice regarding the race, family or religion that he or she was born into. I once heard a Caucasian man call an African man a chimpanzee. Some folks also refer to white-skinned people as pigs. Racism is a terrible phenomenon. People achieve things in life not because of the race they belong to, but because of their individual effort, determination, and capacity development. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Ben Arno, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Mark Zuckerberg, as well as many other super achievers the world over did not attain such laudable heights of extraordinary financial success in their various respective businesses as a result of the color of their skin. Dr. Nelson Mandela and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., both of blessed memories, are some of the most highly esteemed icons of the 21st century, not because of the color of their skin. The architect of humanity, in his infinite wisdom, created human beings black, white and colored. There are many geniuses in the world of sports and entertainment who are aware from all races and some of them have passed away, such as Robert Nesta Marley, also known as Bob Marley, Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, Tina Turner, Mohammed Ali, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Oprah Winfrey, Dolly Parton and many others. The color of their skin added no value to their touring achievements. Former President Barack Obama is a testimony of this truism being the first black president of the United States of America. Racism is born out of hatred and self-deceit. It is an absurdity. Racism and slavery are two faces of the same coin. Racism is an infringement on the fundamental rights of others. Institutionalized racism appears in the form of racially segregated schools, churches, hospitals and the like. It is a system of oppression, intimidation and suppression. Employers who refuse to hire qualified people or those who purposely dole out more worrisome work to people of a particular race or tribe as well as those who refuse to promote employees because of their race or color are all disgraceful. Racial bias is evidence of stark primitive ignorance. Individual racism is bad, but institutionalized racism is illegal and reprehensible. Such was the case during the apartheid era in South Africa, where a white minority dominated, oppressed, and even annihilated black majority for many years. Anti-Semitism is another paradigm of racism. It is racial discrimination targeted against the Jewish people. It is the root cause of the Holocaust and there are many other examples of racism which result in genocide. Racism, anti-Semitism, nepotism, genocide and apartheid are all condemnable acts but unfortunately these are the goals of many deluded people. It is a fact that racism is highly predominant among the whites but blacks and other races like the Asians have unfortunately joined the bandwagon of racial discrimination and hate. Some black folks disown members of their families who marry white people. We must all say no to hate and discrimination as they are abhorrent goals to pursue which can only produce bad results. Importantly, it is worthy to note that it is not every Arab or Muslim individual that is a terrorist. The racial prejudice against Arabs and Muslims generally is so strong. Hate crimes are provoked by racial and religious discrimination. Some black folks disown members of their families who marry white people. We must all say no to hate and discrimination as they are abhorrent goals to pursue which can only produce bad results. Importantly, it is worthy to note that it is not every Arab or Muslim individual that is a terrorist. 
the racial prejudice against Arabs or Muslims generally is so strong. Hate crimes are provoked by racial and religious discrimination. If a 37-year-old man can be convicted and jailed in Australia for torturing rabbits and guinea pigs, why shouldn't racists be jailed for a longer period for meting out psychological and emotional torture and discrimination against fellow human beings? Such discrimination is a result of diseased minds with disgusting goals. Achieving such objectives can only result in bad success. Interracial marriages should be encouraged. We should promote racial tolerance and love for one another. Love has the power to break the backbone of hate and discrimination. Let us together lead the battle against racism and say no to racial discrimination. Another perspective of the bad success phenomenon is distinct in the monster cut corruption. So much has been heard and said about that naughty monster cut corruption. Not a few people insist that corruption is a huge canker worm feeding on the intestine of countless people. It is a vehicle through which many people attain putrid financial success. But what makes corruption so notorious? It is the moral decay and weakness of an individual, people or nation. It is the distortion of an upright form to a debased world. It encompasses extortion, dishonesty, bribery, theft, wickedness and degeneracy. It is a vice that has destroyed many lives and economies, particularly in developing nations of the world. One of the most gruesome and obnoxious problems in most developing countries is the high level of corruption. This monster has become a culture in many countries, particularly in African nations, where there is so much poverty and underdevelopment in the midst of abundance of resources, most of which are stolen, misappropriated, or siphoned away by corrupt individuals. A small number of people exploit the multitude to buy luxury houses, opulent cars, and even acquire refineries in developed nations. Some amass mind-boggling sums of money which they store in foreign bank accounts. Corruption stems from greed and inordinate loss or desire to acquire material wealth or resources through devious means. Greed is an emotional dissatisfaction and it is the fruit of depravity. It is ironic that in some of these developing countries, police officers that are constitutionally empowered to enforce law and order are very corrupt. A country where the number one police chief once stole billions of his local currency and stashed same in his private accounts, while millions of children in that same country go hungry every day, and many of such children never see the four walls of an elementary school. Such a country needs to wake up and fight against the scourge called corruption. Scores of politicians, business entrepreneurs, bureaucrats, teachers, medical practitioners, attorneys, custom and immigration officers and so on live very corrupt lives in some of these nations. The effusive impunity and moral sagacity of several African leaders to crush the truth, disregard the rule of law when it does not favor them and to perpetuate injustice and social economic absurdities is indeed worrisome. It was William Bryant who once said, and I quote, Truth crushed to earth shall rise again. End of quote. Corruption has polarized and damaged the economy of many of these so-called developing countries to the extent that many university graduates cannot find jobs for years after they graduate as they find it extremely difficult to get employment. Many resort to hawking telephone top-up vouchers along major streets while others inevitably turn to crime. Corporate crime is on the increase and election rigging is being perfected by some of these jobless graduates and unschooled youths. Presently, the value of life has become very low in several countries to the extent that many jobless youths are prepared to destroy lives and properties for peanuts. Avoidable airplanes or helicopter crashes have swallowed the lives of many enterprising men, women, children, all because some airline operators cut corners, circumvent maintainers of their aircrafts just to enhance profitability. Aviation regulators are also accused of compromising quality and safety standards after being financially induced. 
In a similar vein, it is a sad reality that many students in high schools and tertiary institutions no longer deem it worthwhile to study very hard anymore. It has become a norm for many of these students to financially induce their teachers in order to be allocated very high grades after examination. Every grade has a fee. A distinction has the highest fee. A student who hardly ever attends lectures and one who can scarcely read can make a distinction in any subject or field if the stipulated fee is paid. This is lamentable, but many consider such corrupt practices as success irrespective of how they are achieved. As for politicians, lots of them are incontrovertibly corrupt. The abuse of public offices for illegitimate and personal gain is the order of the day in many countries. Embezzling public funds, money laundering and drug trafficking are all works of depraved minds that will consistently undermine any economy. Corruption exists in every country of the world but it is most flagrant in several developing countries. This is regrettable because we reside in a world where over 3 billion people live on less than $2 a day. Corruption is responsible for undermining democracy, good governance and developmental advancement across the world. For example, when a public officer disregards the dignity and responsibility of his or her office by stealing and siphoning millions of dollars and launders such monies to other nations of the world, thereby ridiculously boosting such foreign economies, when such a depraved person or persons procure luxury houses overseas, businesses, cars, jewelry and so on, while his or her country stagger in poverty and underdevelopment, then it is apparent that there is a serious problem with such an individual's philosophy of what success entails. When the children of public officers are seen lavishing mind-boggling sums of money they never worked for on friends, women, cars, jewelry, clothes, parties, while one child perishes every five seconds somewhere in the world as a result of hunger, malaria, malnutrition, and other health malaise, then it becomes unarguable that insanity is dancing naked in the marketplace. Corruption causes economic distortions in any nation and erodes the quality of services. But for many, it is the means to the Isle of Success. A lot of corrupt people lack contentment. They suffer from avarice, negative ambition, covetousness for materialism, and self-centeredness. Many African presidents and leaders are known to have foreign bank accounts wherein they have millions of foreign currencies stashed away. The annual capital flight from many African nations to Europe, Asia and the Americas is upsetting because it runs into hundreds of billions of US dollars, euros, pounds, sterling, and so on. Bribery has become a widespread plague in many societies of the world. It is paradoxical that a country like Nigeria, endowed with so much natural resources, still stagger in penury as a result of bad governance, which has aided corruption to thrive. Over a hundred million Nigerians wallow in abject poverty, and this is self-inflicted due to corruption and bad leadership. If Nigeria had good managers of its natural resources, why would there be so much poverty, unprecedented unemployment levels? protracted fear-provoking insecurities and precarious underdevelopment in the country. Ironically, Nigeria is one of the largest oil-producing countries in the world, as well as other numerous mineral resources, yet it is bedeviled by gross corruption and underdevelopment. And to make matters worse, it has gradually been sliding downhill towards the gorge of grave turmoil, crass nauseating nepotism, instability, and apparent economic disintegration. Indubitably, the bane of underdevelopment in several African countries is corruption and bad leadership. Many African leaders were or are visionless, greedy and very insensitive. Self-aggrandizement is their priority mission and such idiosyncrasy always pollutes integrity. Many of these leaders are always junketing to develop countries across Europe, Asia, the Middle East as well as the Americas, but despite their travels, they hardly get any positive inspiration from the level of development in the developed countries. Instead of being motivated to get back home, to transform their communities, states or countries, their priority goal is to underhandedly loot government treasuries and launder taxpayers' monies to their private accounts in developed nations of the world for selfish purposes. 
What a shame indeed. Shame on all corrupt and visionless leaders, most of whom are incompetent to be in leadership positions. Truth be told, when corrupt people are in leadership positions, their citizens inescapably suffer. Inordinate loss for money and material possessions is the root cause of corruption. It is heartbreaking to see and hear that notorious criminals, corrupt and depraved people are conferred as knights, bishops, deacons and pastors of various churches. An ancient scripture states that godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. End of quote. Proven cases of corruption and fraudulent activities anywhere in the world should attract tough punishments. Corruption is a ruthless monster that destroys the corporate image of a nation and its people. It obliterates economic growth and empowerment. Sadly, it is a channel through which millions of people achieve their goals of financial abundance We should not be mistaken for good success. The monsters behind corruption have held several countries captive for many decades. A government employee who gets convicted for stealing billions of his local currency is left off the hook with just a slap on the wrist. But a person who steals a goat gets a five years jail sentence. The abuse of forest subsidy, the questionable and sometimes unjustifiable allocation of oil blocks to political jobbers, the butchers and associates of political leaders leave so much to be desired. The bloodbath by terrorists and bandits in many countries around the world is upsetting but evidently foiled by corruption. Such terrorists and bandits leave families displaced, homeless, without food, shelter or medicine. It is always too late to cry when the head is cut off. Granting amnesty to terrorists and bandits will not bring back the dead or heal bereaved families. Why should some governments grant amnesty to terrorists and bandits who murder countless people? Why not grant amnesty to all criminals? Heightened insecurity levels discourage foreign investment in any country. The insecurity levels in several countries around the world, for instance, has assumed an awful and fearsome dimension. Political leaders must rise up and fight to defend the sovereignty of their countries. Terrorists are smiling to the banks. They are often successful criminal operations, promote more abductions and acts of terror. It is time for political leaders to prioritize and support economic strategies that will create job opportunities for millions of unemployed youths. They should also provide social services for their citizens. Services such as regular power supply, good education, affordable housing, better healthcare systems, and enhanced security of lives and properties. There can never be development without improved security architecture. Therefore, political leaders must fight corruption sincerely in order to promote justice, equity, and for good success to overshadow bad success.